two Seiko chronographs you can find for about $150. But which one's best? Let's find out. In the left corner, we've got the Seiko 1792-0DW0, a fully quartz chronograph, very popular and only available outside of Japan. Unlike, in the right corner, the Seiko 8T6700C0, which is only available in Japan, but of course now they're available pretty much anywhere uh, on eBay and places like that. For this comparison, I'm going to blatantly steal from Jody at Just One More Watch. I think he breaks down the, the watches into good categories. So let's go with that and we'll start off with the movement which gets double points. So although they're both quartz, the 792 is fully quartz and I'll explain the difference in a second, but basically this one is all electronic. So you press these buttons here, it pushes that electronic button and the motors power the chronograph there. And when you stop, you push that button there, press the reset and the motor sort of turn the hands back to the original position. Okay, so a pretty good plain inside, very plasticky movement. It works well, it's been going for a long time, but it differs to the 867 because the 867 is a quartz movement, but with a mechanically controlled chronograph. So it's as accurate as a quartz because it's controlled by the crystal, but the buttons here push levers and hams and things to start the stopwatch. So if I press here, much harder to press. And as you can see, instead of ticking, it's slowly sweeping around uh, the dial there. And another difference is when we stop this and then reset, it's gonna jump back to its starting position there in an instant, rather than the motors powering it round. So really nice, feels like a, so-called proper chronograph on this one because it's mechanically controlled, although it is powered by quartz underneath. That makes it superior for me than the all quartz 1792. In terms of functions, they're pretty much the same. The 1792 has 1 20th of a second capability, whereas the 86.7 just 1 5th of a second. They both have 12 hours though for the stopwatch. Uh, they both have a date and that's pretty much it. For me overall though, because of that mechanical chronograph, I just love the way that feels when you operate it. The 867 gets the win there and it gets two ticks because Jody says movements get double points. So that's what I'm gonna do as well. On to the bracelet and they're both a bit disappointing here. Now I have to admit the 867 here is on a bracelet from an SKX diver actually. And I don't have the original bracelet, but from what I've researched, it's the same except the clasp. The clasp should have two little buttons on the side, which is a good thing, but even then it's still pretty sort of flimsy and rattly and nothing special. The 1792 is the same, although this does have nicely polished sort of stainless steel strips there. I suppose it's all stainless steel, but uh, the highly polished strips there just add a nice little feature to the bracelet. If you can hear that, it's kind of rattly, jangly. So neither of them great quality. Um, one feature of this is compared to the original bracelet on the 86.7, this has many more holes for fine adjustment. So this is really gonna fit your wrist pretty well, I think. So overall, I'm gonna give the bracelet win to the 1792 on the left. You can adjust it more finely, and I like those highly polished uh, strips. Onto the crystal, and it's a draw because they both use pretty much the same crystal. The size is slightly different, but it's a flat piece of hardlex glass, nothing special. I do see them available for uh, secondhand, pretty scratched up sometimes, so you want to check that if you're buying secondhand. And while I'm here, let's do the water resistance as well, which is going to be a draw as well, because they both have the same water resistance. And as you can see on the dial here, it says 100 meters. The 867 doesn't say that on the dial, but it is the same. Uh, neither of them have a screw down crown. So you wouldn't want to take them too deep if you go swimming. And you're also not supposed to use the chronograph either when they're underwater. So be careful of that. So crystal and water resistance, both a draw. On to finishing. And although they both look pretty much the same from a distance, there is a difference when you look close up. The 1792 
has uh, polished sides and brushed lugs there, which looks nice. Um, but not much else really to write home about. There's a slight ridge there, which I suppose is kind of interesting, but the bezel um, just sort of is joined to the case there and no real sort of decoration. It's kind of what you see is what you get and not really sharp edges on the edge of the case here. Over to the 8T67 and immediately I can see a difference, especially around the pushers. The, the sharpness of the edges is much better. Obviously it's not higher end Seiko level, but it's really nicely done. The overall um, finishing is still not too fancy. You've got polished sides, you've got brushed lugs. The bezel area, however, it looks like it kind of can be popped off like a Speedmaster bezel, but looking closely, I don't think it can be. I think it is all one piece steel, but it's got a nice sort of like lip sort of edge to it there compared to the much more plain bezel of the 1792. So the finishing, this gets the win. Let's jump to the build quality result and it's another win for the 867. The crown is nice and chunky, but it has a very smooth feel when you operate it. The pushers have that lovely tactile feel, thanks to the mechanical chronograph. And overall it's heavier and it feels more solid than the 1792. The 1792 weighs in at about 99 grams and the 867 is about 109 grams. So roughly 10% heavier, but it doesn't feel too heavy. It's a really nice sort of chunky, solid kind of feel to it. In your hand, it just feels better made. On to the dial and hands, and this is the biggest difference between the two, apart from the mechanical chronograph. You can really see they've both got their own character. The 1792 looks nice. It's got a classic design, in my opinion, but it's actually just printed onto a black dial. It's a flat surface and really nothing special, nothing to write home about. The 867 dial, however, is really something special, I think, at this price point in particular. The multi-layered dial has got a sort of sunken sub-dial on the left-hand side, and then the top and bottom sub-dials have got that nice ridged circular edge to them in metal, and to top it off, you've got an applied Seiko logo there. Really nice dial. So not surprisingly, a win for the 867 there. Sticking with the dial and hands, we'll look at the loom and legibility of these two. The loom is pretty much the same on both of them. It's not that good in my opinion, especially compared to some of the Seiko divers. Legibility, however, I can see a difference. And as much as I love the dial on the 8T67, when you look at them from a distance, the hands really disappear when they're over the two sort of metallic subdial areas there. Whereas on the left-hand side, the 1792, pretty much visible all the time. So I like this dial, but sorry, you get the win. And now on to the X factor. Now earlier I asked my totally uninterested neutral partner what she thought, and of the two, she gave the win to the 1792. One complaint she had of the 867 was that the sort of extra metal bits were just a bit blingy, a bit tacky, she said. Uh, which I, I don't agree with, but okay, she's the X Factor boss, so she wins with that one. So that gives us our final score, and as you can see, we've got a win for the 867 with 7 points compared to 5. I think that's a fair result, because after wearing them both for a while, and considering they're both the same price, there's only one that I want to keep.